<laughs> wow. <laughs> Listen, now imagine if you were in this studio and I have to get security the way they're acting here. That's Congratulations. <laughs> First, I got to talk to you about SNL. Are you ready? November 13th is your day. <laughs> uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm excited. It's, um, I mean, it's been a, it, it's been, a, it's been a time, and uh, to go and do that, I'm just, uh, it's a rodeo, and I'm, I'm excited for a rodeo. Oh, okay. Well, you're along for the ride, and we'll be there watching you and rooting you on, because that is such, I mean, I'm sure it's a different experience in many ways, especially that monologue. Are you going to go for the funny route? Are you going to go for the thought? Are you going to dance? Are you going to wear pink like Kim Kardashian? I have so many questions. <laughs> what are you feeling, Ooh. Jonathan? <laughs> I don't, I mean, it feels to me, look, so I just, I stopped watching it. So I've, I've, I've watched it this whole time, and I'm like, I can't watch it anymore. No, I, I can't watch it anymore. I just got to be cool. Right. And just, I'll get up there and tell the truth. Oh. I'll tell them who I am and, and what I do, and, and I might wear pink. You wait, my, okay, okay, <laughs> I like that, I like that. Okay, you know what, that, I, I love the strategy of telling them who you are, because everyone has seen you in something as of late. You've been celebrated, Emmy nominations and the like. But then I started to dig into your story the who you really are, and what a journey you've had. Your mother is a pastor. Um, yes, you, you were born in California, but like me, you were raised, and your roots are in Texas. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, yeah, my father was, a, um, was in the Air Force, and we lived out in California. I was born there. And then um, we got moved to Georgetown, uh, Texas, and uh, my maternal and paternal grandparents uh, from down home. And so that's where we stayed. Hmm. And um, that's that's where I call home. Yeah, that's where you yeah. call home. It's interesting because where you have called home has been in, in limbo at different times in your life. As I've read, um, like this character, Nat Love, that you play in the Western, mm. it was a rocky road, which included a time where you were even homeless. Yeah, I mean, that was... Um... <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, the, oh, the uh, picture that we're showing of you there—that's <laughs> young, yeah. younger you. Uh, so that, that I think that photo there, I probably was maybe thirteen. So yeah. a few years after that, I um, I got into a, got into a bout with with um, you know just in the house and ended up, you know, as my mom would say, you know, feeling yourself, mm. and um, it just got a little too much for me, and I'd just been in and out of trouble and. I was kind of making my way and working, and um, I just decided I can do this. I think I can do this on my own. And um, I found my way uh, living in my car for uh, a little under a year. So um, you were and, and trying to manage school and stuff. You, yeah. you, you, you know, you had gotten into some trouble, and and and, mm. and as, as you said, your mother saw you as someone who was not ready to listen to her rules and listen to. What was what was being said to you in the home? You're a kid, and you decide I'm going to leave because this show, Jonathan, is about not knowing where your journey will end up. So here you're mm, this yes, kid um, at that critical point in your life where you feel you can leave and find your own way, but mm. it leads you to sleeping in your car. You mm. couldn't have ever imagined, I, I, I would think, where you are right now. It was it's twofold because. I was sleeping in my car, and I had a lot. Of, I was lit, I was working at Red Lobster and Olive Garden, so I was fed, <laughs> um, and uh, so that was good. That was good. Um, and I was also doing a lot of reading. You know, one thing about acting that I liked is the words, and a lot of the reading I was doing. And I had worked at um, I had worked a lot of jobs. I think I was a barista at a Starbucks in the Barnes and Noble. Oh. And there's a Barnes and Noble in Cedar Hill, Texas, in which I borrowed <laughs> their entire theater section over time. Uh, and I had this theater section in my car. And I was reading uh, Stanislavski, An Act of Preparedness. And I remember reading that book um, mm. along with my Bible mm. um, in that car. And um, wrapping my mind around this idea of what acting was and, and the concept of it and the craft of it. And um, I've been doing it a little bit, um, but now there's nothing else to do. You know, I definitely wasn't gonna work at uh, Red Lobster as good as the ch cheddar biscuits. Work. I was about to say, don't don't sleep on uh, the cheddar biscuit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was, you know what I mean? Was 
interesting because I'm from the same area you're from. I know that Red Lobster. I know that Starbucks. Mm -hmm. But to know you is to know this story. I remember Jim Carrey saying uh, years ago when he was homeless, he wrote himself a check. And he said, one day mm -hmm. I'm going to cash this check. I don't remember what it was, but it was his vision board, if you will. And mm -hmm. some years later, he was paid this enormous amount of money to do this film. So when you were there with the books that you'd taken from Barnes & Noble, borrowed from your employer, yes, you're in there, you're studying. How did you see this playing out? Did you say, I'm going to be out of this car in X amount of time, and this is going to happen for me? There's a, there's a certain there's a certain moment for me, and you know, I was a young boy. It was funny because I was, I guess the I guess the turning point is the day I actually go back to my, I go to my uncle's house after about um, about ten months. I go to my uncle's house, Uncle Chuck, love you, man. <laughs> um, but I hear this. It was just a little voice, you know. Um, I remember saying, like, it's going to be all right, bro. Oh. And and you're going to make it. And I mean, it's kind of wild. You know what I mean? Like, like you're going you're gonna to be okay. And uh, this is it. You know, this acting thing is it, you know. And um, it's the same voice that's kind of been with me uh, this whole time. And I've just kind of grabbed onto that. And that's what made me, you know, ultimately leave the car and go to my uncle's place. Um, but it wasn't a Jim Carrey story, but I did, I did have hope and I did, I just felt that it was for me, you know, whatever this is was for me. So Jonathan, as we talked about our Texas roots, I know Juneteenth yes, parades with black cowboys marching down the streets of downtown Dallas when you were channeling this character. So Nat Love is a real character. Um, most of these people are real in a fictionalized storyline. How did you prepare for this role? Well, Nat Love, as you know, a uh, black Southern man can talk <laughs> and can spin a tale. And Nat Love uh, spun this tale into an autobiography yeah. that he wrote about himself. And it was full of all these exploits that he was the best horse rider, he was the best gunslinger, he was the best, he was the best, the best, all this stuff. Um, and I read that book. It's about 70 pages long. And I read it on repeat, on repeat. And then when I got the script, and I kept going through the script. The script had all these, the story of The Heart of They Fall is an incredible saga, yeah. ex, uh, um, um, odyssey of, of Nat Love, you yeah. know, and, and the other players at play. Um, and so I just looked at it as another chapter, another missing chapter, as far as the, the movement yeah. and the gestus of Nat Love. So that was that. Yeah. Then there was the fact that if Nat Love is gonna be this gunslinger, this horse rider, um, Thinking about that young boy reading that book, um, that acting book in the car, I was like, I gotta do this for real now. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got I got busy, um, really working on my on my horsemanship. Um, he actually did traverse through Texas. Yeah. You know, our, our home sex. So that was beautiful. So I got to use a lot of my natural dialect, a lot of our natural dialect. <laughs> um, you know. But I, you know what um, I love kind of, about it too, kind of break though, that down. John, I love the love story. Oh, mm. between your character and, and Zazie's character. I, I just loved, if you're not into Westerns or if you think, okay, well, this is the Black Cow, but it is, not, it is a love story that is yes, so layered. And my friend Regina King, they have an action scene that's like nothing I've ever seen in a movie involving two female leads. It's just so exactly beautifully right. done. It, it's brilliant. Exactly right. It's we should good. clap for that. Oh, yeah, we should clap for yeah. that, for real. Yeah. All right, because I, I, know, I know you're going to come in studio when you have a chance. I know you got to go, but I do have to ask you. So, Adele, you're in London. Adele's from London. She was in Vogue magazine's 73 Questions, a video series where they ask different things. And your name popped up, friend. Here it is. Who'd you bet is going to be the next James Bond? I mean, it's a tough one. There's been lots of up, lots of different choices and stuff, but I would like Jonathan Major to be the next Bond, but I don't know if that's allowed because he's American. Would you like some milk? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love that. Listen, um, Adele is creating quite the stir because, as you know, there's been talk about Idris Elba, who stars in The Heart of They Fall, 
um, mm -hmm. who I won't give the plot twist away, but the ending of, the, of that movie is so good. But if, if we have to pick between you and Idris Elba, we all lose. So can it just be both? Can't you both be Bond? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would say I would say this just with my my current one of my one of my many blessings. There are all these things called variants, mm. where there's more than one version of the same person. Oh, that's the MCU talking. Uh huh. So um, uh -huh. maybe there can be uh, more than one Bond, but I will say, you know, would you want to brother, be Bond? Would you want to be the next James Bond? Would I want to be the next James Bond? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Wow. We are here for it all, and I'm just so happy. And in your story, as I said, this whole show today is about unexpected twists and turns in your journey and things working out sometimes as you believe and other times mm. not. You are so inspiring and all of the accolades are so well deserved and we're just happy to have you part of the TAM fam now. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for having me. Thank you.